Following the Battle of Yavin, Darth Vader was able to develop a plan to destroy the Rebellion. Instead of chasing the scattered rebel fleet around the galaxy, he would instead allow them to gain strength, amassing power and resources so that he might crush it in one concentrated strike. Vader's plan would work perfectly. Following the Mon Cala revolt against the Empire, the Rebellion was able to amass several of their cruisers, converting them into fully functioning warships. Since Yavin, the Rebel fleet was able to grow substantially, causing its High Command to gain newfound hope in their war against the Empire. Only thanks to the treachery of Queen Trios, the Rebellion had perfectly fallen into Vader's trap. In this video expose, we'll look at Vader's attack on the Makota space docks, where the Sith Lord revealed his Super Star Destroyer, the Executor, to the Rebellion for the first time. We'll also look at how Vader revealed the Executor in Legends, using it to seek revenge against the Rebels for the Battle of Yavin. Again, starting with our look at the current canon, thanks to Queen Trios perfectly playing the part of Double Agent, Trios was able to reveal the location of the Rebel fleet to Vader at the Makota space docks in the Outer Rim. As the Rebellion celebrated their growing fleet and resources, Vader and Death Squadron would drop out of hyperspace, with the Super Star Destroyer leading the attack. Upon seeing the Executor for the first time, Luke remarked that he hadn't seen anything so big since the Death Star, making it unquestionable that Vader was commanding the massive capital ship. Thanks to the efforts of Trios, although the Rebellion tried to defend its fleet, its starfighter bay doors were locked shut, the fleet's communications and weapon systems were disabled, and their hyperspace and propulsion engines were non-operational. In other words, they were easy targets for Vader. However, Vader didn't attack immediately, instead allowing time for fear to sufficiently build up in the Rebels, wanting to attack not just the Rebellion's fleet, but also its hope. But after feeling the terror rise within his enemies, Vader gave the command to destroy the Rebel cruisers. The attack was a massacre. Although the efforts of Luke, Leia, and Han were able to save a few of the Rebellion's resources, as well as themselves and High Command members such as Mon Mothma, the Rebel losses were staggering. More than half of their newly retrofitted cruisers and 90% of its starfighters were destroyed. Further, they lost key members of its command hierarchy, including Generals Willard, Hudson, Kor, Draven, and Dodonna. As Vader would later report to Sidious himself, the Executor and Death Squadron helped to ensure that the Rebellion could no longer hurt the Empire, and more importantly, demonstrated to the Rebellion that victory was impossible. In Legends, Vader's introduction of the Executor to the Rebellion happened very differently, but there are some interesting similarities in Vader's use of the Super Star Destroyer against the Rebellion. Six months after the Battle of Yavin, the Executor was finally completed, making it the most powerful capital ship in the galaxy and one of the Empire's best assets against the growing Rebellion. The Executor wouldn't first be used directly against the Rebellion's fleet. Instead, Vader would unleash its power on the relatively small Rebel outpost known as Lactine Depot. But the strategic elements of the minor conflict didn't matter. Much more important was the psychological consequences. It took the Rebellion roughly one year to take the Depot from the Empire, and in mere hours, Vader and the Executor didn't take it back into their possession, but rather, left it completely destroyed and in ruin. It was a bold statement from Vader. The Empire's new Super Star Destroyer was a worthy replacement for the Death Star, representing a new Imperial superweapon. But the cannon attack by the Executor on the Makota space docks had a very close equivalent within Legends. In fact, the elements of the Makota attack are practically mirrored from an attack in Legends upon the Rebel fleet located at Deep Space Besh, which again involved Vader and the Executor. Just like Queen Trios' betrayal in canon made the attack at Makota possible, it was the treachery of Janik Sunbur, an Imperial Lieutenant who grew up with Luke Skywalker, who would make the Legends attack at Deep Space Besh possible. It also didn't hurt that the Empire tortured a rebel named Joran Sol for the rebel fleet's location at Deep Space Besh as well as its hyperspace protocols, also reprogramming him into an Imperial spy. But thanks to Sunbur's infiltration of the Rebellion after the destruction of the Death Star, pretending to be a defector dissatisfied with the Empire, the Imperial was able to implant himself within the Alliance High Command. Nine months after the Battle of Yavin, Vader had everything in place to crush the Rebellion. 
Just as was seen in Legends, Vader, the Executor, and numerous Star Destroyers emerge from hyperspace, catching the primary Rebel fleet unprepared. Because Vader had the hyperspace protocols of the Rebellion, Imperial capital ships were also waiting for the Rebels at their predetermined rendezvous points. It looked as though Vader would succeed in finally annihilating the Rebel Alliance. However, the Rebels would be saved by Joran Sol, who was able to overcome his programming to try to redeem himself for his attacks against the Rebellion. Although Sol would lose his life, he was able to get the Rebel fleet to jump to random hyperspace points to avoid the waiting Imperial capital ships. Thanks to Joran Sol's redemption, Vader wasn't able to deliver the crushing blow he expected, nor was he able to capture Luke Skywalker. But regardless, Vader's attack on the Rebellion at Deep Space Besh using the Executor Super Star Destroyer, just like the attack on Makota and Cannon, significantly devastated the Rebel fleet and succeeded in scattering it throughout the galaxy. So there we have it, how Vader revealed the Executor Super Star Destroyer to the Rebellion in both Canon and Legends. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive rewards and discussions. If not for me... For not changing awesomeness...